Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to show you how to make some edible rice paper. Let's check it out. You may have encountered edible paper on your plate before, such as a thin sheet of paper wrapped around the outside of a spring roll or paper used for cake decorating. But have you ever wondered how this edible paper relates to the paper that you write on? The earliest plant-based paper-like writing sheet was papyrus from Egypt. However, the first documented paper-making process dates back to the 2nd century CE in China. That's around 1,900 years ago. The paper being made in China was used for writing, drawing and money. In the 8th century CE, this paper making process spread to the Islamic world and then later in the 11th century CE it spread to Europe. The paper making process has undergone many changes over the years to improve the process, with eventually in the 19th century wood based paper being invented. Today I'm going to show you how to make some edible rice paper and tell you how this relates to the paper that you write on. For this you will need some brown rice flour, some potato starch, a measuring spoon, a microwavable plate, a bowl, cling film and food colouring is optional. The first thing I'm going to do is take my cling film and spread a sheet of this over the top of my microwavable plate. You want to use a plate which has raised edges because you don't want the cling film touching the base of the plate. So I'm going to spread this nice and tight. Then to my bowl I'm going to add 1 tablespoon of rice flour, 1 tablespoon of potato starch and 1.5 and tablespoons of water and mix this around. You want to get this mixture to the consistency of white school glue and you can add extra water if you need to, to get the right consistency. Once my paste is at the right consistency, I'm going to pour it onto the cling film that I'd stretched across the plate and I'm going to spread this out evenly. You can do this by using a spoon or simply by tilting the plate. Then I'm going to put the plate into the microwave on high for 45 seconds to dry out the paste and the sheet of paper should look dry when it is done. The length of time you need to put your plate in the microwave for may be different depending on your microwave. An extra safety note here, food should generally not touch cling film when it is being heated in a microwave. However, this is okay occasionally for food of which you only eat very small quantities. At the end of the 45 seconds, I'm going to take the plate out of the microwave and evaluate my sheet of edible paper. You will need to be really careful when you're taking the plate out of the microwave because the plate will be hot. I'm then going to transfer my edible paper off the cling film onto a separate plate. Again, you want to be very careful doing this as the edible paper will be hot underneath. There are different methods you can use to try and get the paper off of the cling film. I'm just going to peel some of the cling film off the plate and then peel the paper off the cling film, but you could try tipping it upside down or anything else that you can think of to get your paper off of the cling film. It will be a wee bit sticky. There are some parts of my edible paper which are thin and look a bit like paper, but there are other parts that are darker and thicker and not quite as dry. This is because some of the mixture clumped at these points on the cling film so it hasn't dried out quite as much. Because I said the first paper making process was linked to China, I'm now going to make another sheet of edible paper using red, which is a lucky colour in Chinese culture. This is also a good way to tie this activity into Chinese New Year if that is something you're studying. So I'm going to use the exact same quantities of each substance, 1 tablespoon of potato starch and 1 tablespoon of brown rice flour. Then I'm going to add a few drops of food colouring and now I'm going to add my 1.5 tablespoons of water. Because the food colouring is a liquid, this may affect the amount of water that you need to add to try and get the right consistency. But again, you can add more water if you need to. Then again, I'm going to put the sheet into the microwave for 45 seconds, bring it out and evaluate it. 
This sheet hasn't dried out nearly as much as the first one, probably because I've added food colouring to it, and it is very sticky, again, probably because of the food colouring. This sheet probably needed more time in the microwave, but that's something that you can experiment with at home by bringing the sheet out and looking at it and evaluating whether it needs more time in the microwave. So how does the edible paper relate to actual paper that you would write on? Well, paper is made from plant fibres called cellulose, spread out into a thin mat. Cellulose is a thread-like component which gives plants its structure. Wood is made up of around 50% cellulose, whereas the brown rice flour is made up of about 2% cellulose. Added to this to give it some strength is starch. Starch is a sugar-like component found within plants and it is really good as a gluing and stiffening agent because when it's heated with liquid, it expands and forms a network of starch particles. Cellulose and starch are both edible and that is why we're able to use these components, the cellulose in the brown rice flour and the starch in the potato starch, to be able to make edible paper. You would not want to eat commercial paper though that you write on because it has other chemicals and different things added to it to give it more strength and to make it smoother and more appropriate for writing on. Now that you know how to make the edible rice paper, you can try experimenting yourself with different recipes. You could try different quantities of each material, you could try adding colours to it, or you could try making some paper and then writing on it with an edible ink pen. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM experiments and activities that I've done, here to my STEM career interviews and here to my new series on 100 scientists who influenced the world. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring edible paper.